This is Richard Vavro, an internationally known artist who, along with his father, Ted, keep a close eye and ear to the latest developments in Poland. Despite severe handicaps, Richard, who was recently featured on the national That's Incredible program, uses crayons to draw glimpses of Polish people and their daily lives. Ted Vavro, like all members of the Polish community in Austin, hesitates to talk in great detail about the present state of events in Poland, but his concern naturally is for the people. I always um, felt most sorry for mothers, especially. Mothers who had young children, especially babies. When the baby was born, mother just couldn't go to a shop just like here and buy whatever she needed. She had no clue whether or where she could get a piece of cake, a cake of soap or a chocolate or a nappy or powder or anything like that, you see. And uh, I believe that mothers anywhere in the world, you know, they can't even imagine having a baby, not having a possibility of buying those things nearby. Ted and Richard Vavro leave for Scotland later this week, where they had hoped to meet with friends from Poland. But the martial law imposed on the country will prevent that reunion. Dick Ellis, 24 Action News. There was no question tonight that Mullen would be replaced by Erty. The questions of alleged illegal meetings, the future of transportation in Austin, and what the will of the people really is dominated tonight's debate. Mayor Carol McClellan called the impending vote elitist representation, saying diverse viewpoints should be represented on the Austin Transportation Study Group. Mullen himself said the council was setting a dangerous precedent by dictating the will of four members on the ATS. Councilman Larry Ducer countered that he was elected by the will of the people and he will carry out his mandate. And as for charges of illegal meetings and backroom politics, Councilman Richard Goodman said there was more than meets the eye. We, the gang of four, so to speak, have proposed alternatives that are very workable to take care of the problems that we have now. We've been accused of violating the open meetings law, we've been accused of coercion, we've been accused of sleazy tactics, all the way down the line, when not one word has been said about the gang of 15 that met secretly and privately and planned this meeting. The final vote, as expected, four to two, with Mayor McClellan and Councilman Mullen dissenting. So City Councilman Charles Erty is now the council's representative on the Austin Transportation Study. But the issue of the extension of both ends of MOPAC is not over yet. It will be Austin voters in April who will ultimately decide the question. Dick Ellis, 24 Action News. This was the scene at Austin's Municipal Airport this afternoon. Long lines of cars stacked bumper to bumper in front of the terminal building as passengers unloaded luggage and Christmas presents. Once inside, get ready for more lines as ticket agents are swamped. If you don't already have a ticket, airline officials say you may be able to get one as some airlines are now doubling up on flights. If you think this looks crowded now, Ron Collison of Texas International Airlines says it's been this way for days. Actually, last Thursday and Friday were about the same way out here. The ticket counters were so bogged down with people that the, you couldn't even tell where one end of the line began and the other one started. They were all intertwined, and it's just unreal. I, never, I don't think I've ever seen a holiday like this in the 12 years I've been out here. Gordon Gunn left Pueblo, Colorado at 6 this morning, and he says if you think the Austin situation is bad, fly the Dallas-Fort Worth airport. Well, the flight that I was on was scheduled for one gate, and then it got switched two gates over, and then it got switched nine gates over from that. And while we were standing there waiting to to get on the, the flight that we, after the last time it was switched. They heard them do that to at least three or four of the flights. They were shuttling people and airplanes around from gate to gate. It was, it was like, you see the movie Airplane, you know, with the people running from gate to gate? <laughs> it's a lot like that. Oh, man, it, the place was a zoo. It really was. Be prepared to wait quite a while to find your luggage, too. There were long lines at the lost luggage counters, and some people were rather upset that luggage and Christmas presents had not yet arrived.
The mood was especially somber at St. Thomas More Catholic Church tonight as those of Polish heritage gathered for traditional Christmas Eve observances. The sign says Merry Christmas, but for those here tonight, it was a time not only of celebration, but of special concern for the homeland. Many here have relatives in Poland. Although they do not talk much about the political situation, their concern is seen on their faces. Father Joseph Kamichik said the Polish people are people of great moral power, adding the madness in Poland will pass. He said our friends in Poland do not enjoy the freedom we have today, and our solidarity must be our dedication to peace, joy, and happiness. The Polish mass is one of great tradition. The young people, dressed in traditional Polish clothing, present gifts to the baby Jesus in the traditional Polish fashion. Three pieces of chalk to mark the doorway symbolize the gifts of the three wise men. The stalks of wheat, symbols of a good harvest. The mood is somewhat more festive following the mass as they gather for a Christmas Eve dinner with special holiday Polish food. It is here we found Emilia Szalowska, who came to Austin last month after leaving Poland. She says through translator Zenobia Smith that the situation in her homeland is bad for the people. She said they stand in line 30 hours just to get some food. And she said there's no food to buy. No shoes, nothing. She says she thinks of home, but yet she likes it better here. But her thoughts are for Christmas at home. So while the situation in Poland remains in question tonight, the Polish people of Austin and Central Texas are celebrating their Christmas Eve with concern and hope. Across the nation, 178 people have been killed in traffic accidents this holiday. Here in Texas, the death toll stands at 20. The Department of Public Safety has predicted 51 people will die in traffic mishaps by the end of the holiday weekend, midnight tomorrow. The DPS credits safe driving by motorists and a crackdown by law enforcement agencies on DWI cases for the low count. The Austin Police Department reported 13 DWI arrests overnight, which police officials say is a large number of DWI arrests. DPS trooper Tom Mobley says there have been no fatalities reported in the immediate Austin area. Well, the nearest fatality we've had to the Austin area is uh, Giddings, about 60 miles east, and I'd say that's super. The uh, DWI enforcement and uh, the public media that, uh, that's been put out has been uh, super. I suppose uh, we could give the credit to the drivers on the highways, but we're going to have to give some of the credit to the special emphasis on the DWI enforcement. The last few hours of any holiday period are considered the most dangerous for motorists. Law officers encourage you to drive carefully, observe the 55 mile per hour speed limit, and don't drink if you drive. This will help ensure that you get home from your Christmas holiday safely. Across the nation, 189 people have been killed in holiday traffic accidents, and the death toll here in Texas has now risen to 24. The Texas Department of Public Safety fears the death toll may reach 51 by midnight tomorrow. There have been no fatalities reported in the immediate Austin area so far this holiday weekend, and Austin police would like to see it stay that way. Police and Travis County Sheriff's officers are cracking down this year on people who are driving while intoxicated. As a matter of fact, Austin police picked up 13 people on DWI charges last night, saying that number is higher than normal. Texas Department of Public Safety Trooper Tom Mobley says Central Texas law officers will continue to keep a close watch on drivers who are drinking. I talked with the sheriff's office and with the city police, and they say that their uh, arrest for driving while intoxicated have increased substantially because of the special effort that's been put on uh, the DWI problem. Holiday travelers will be taking to the roads tomorrow for home, and the Department of Public Safety suggests you drive with care, observe the speed limit, and don't drink while you drive. The holiday traffic death count ends at midnight tomorrow, and already the DPS says 35 people have been killed in accidents on the state streets and highways. 16 people have been killed in two car collisions, eight were killed in one car mishaps, and there have been eight auto pedestrian fatalities statewide. 
that Christmas holiday weekend was not near as deadly, and the death toll was well below the department's prediction. But this New Year's holiday has brought a bad combination of alcohol and fatigue, and the death toll is soaring. It just happens that uh, when we abuse ourselves with work and alcohol, uh, at nighttime, you start driving, you're going to go to sleep, and uh, it appears that several did on our highways. We had uh, 27 people who died over the New Year's Eve uh, night, uh, which was extremely high, extremely high, and we attribute the majority of it to alcohol consumption. Two groups trying to hold the death toll down by keeping motorists awake are Hill Country Assistance and the Travis County REACT. They have set up a coffee break at the rest stop on Interstate 35 between Round Rock and Georgetown. The CB radio invitation is made for sleepy motorists to pull over, stretch your legs, and have a cup of coffee. Well, for one thing, we have, we have really some great conversations. We give them coffee, and we try to make them feel welcomed, and really, Texans have hit, had it. They've, they've really made a big hit with Northerners at our rest stop, especially because we've had so many people from the North visit us. The rest stop will remain in operation through 6 tomorrow evening. Members of both groups say they hope nearly 3,000 people will take a break at the rest stop.